So today we're going to do a tutorial on inking and this is just inking directly in my sketchbook over some non-photo blue lines. It's nothing super fancy so it may hopefully be applicable to you. Um, I've gone over recently some of my favorite inking tools as well as um, other inking tutorials but since there's so much interest in this topic I thought it could bear more repetition. So I pulled out some of my favorite things to ink with. A uh, Kuratake Fudego Kochi, a Kuratake number six, and it has the gray and the black ink. And I think this is a zebra. I'd have to check my blog. And um, the Sakura of America Pigma, per, like Pigma Professional pens. And this is a tutorial on um, like black and white inking so inking with heavy spot blacks. If you are interested in seeing videos on inking for color, um, I, the card right here should have one for you. So I'm gonna start with my Kuratake Fudego Koji and it's getting kind of beaten up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull another one out just in case I need it. Now, as I've mentioned in other videos, this is something that's called a Fude pen and it's also referred to as a sign pen. And it is used for, um, you know, creating your signature if you're in Japan or China or Korea. But over here, we can use them as an inking tool. And they're nice because they're handy and portable, like a technical pen, but they're able to give variety in their line weights. So right now I'm going to go ahead and um, so when I do um, like spot black or heavy inking for black and white reproduction, what I will usually do is I'll usually ink the entire piece and then I'll go back and uh, see where I can add more ink. And there are a variety of tools for inking for illustration or inking for comics. Um, you can do this digitally. You can use a brush. You can use a nib. You can use technical pens. It really depends on the situation. This is just a little standalone illustration, and I chose and I created it for this demonstration. So. Um, there's really no need for me to pull out the brush. But if you're interested in an inking with brush tutorial, I have some back um, in like November, December, and January. Because I recorded a lot of videos for Inktober. And often when I'm inking, I try to ink the face first while my hand is fresh because if I'm going to make a mistake um, it, I don't want it to be on the face. It can be on the clothes, it can be on the hands, it can be anywhere but the face. Of course I already did make a mistake so I'm going to finish those lines and grab my white Signo gel pen these are super handy to have because you can do very fine corrections on the spot. It does take a little while to dry. You don't want to ink directly over it. So once your correction has dried, you can go over it and uh, either tighten your line that you'd already put down or even make your line a little wider. Unfortunately, I crossed back into it, so. And if you're inking, it really helps to have sufficient light. You see how my hand is casting a shadow on my paper? You, you really don't want that. It makes it hard to see what you're doing. Unfortunately, the needs of recording mean that for you guys to see what I'm doing, I need this light right there. But if I were inking and not recording, I wouldn't have that particular light on. Okay. 
And when you're inking for black and white reproduction, you want to start thinking about areas of shadow because the only way your viewer is going to be able to tell what the light source is and uh, to a great part how dramatic the scene is meant to be is through the lighting you choose. So um, they would be able to tell like time of day, they would be able to tell the mood, they might be able to tell the setting, all from your shadows. So let's say the light source is coming from directly above. I'll indicate that with a yellow highlighter. That means you are going to want a cast shadow under the neck like that. So the way you do that is you thicken up that line. And I'm hesitant to do the cast shadow in her hair right now because I'm going to be blocking in. Areas that are going to be in shadow will often have a thicker line weight than those that are hit by light. Sometimes to the point where you're like um, doing something called hide and seek lines where parts of the line aren't rendered. So right now I'm mostly just trying to get the basic outline inked with basic line weights before I go back in and I determine what needs to be made darker. All right, so I have my basic line art completed and now it's time to start determining and filling in areas of spot black and um, this can be done on a character by character basis in fact it should be done on a character by character basis so Kara has dark brown hair not black when in, when rendered in color but dark brown and that means I have the option of rendering her hair in a few ways um, I can leave it like this. I can try to render the actual texture of her hair. And there are many artists who do that, to not with my particular character, but with their own characters can do that to great effect. It's always been kind of difficult for me. Um, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and render her hair in. And I'm using that zebra because it's got a nice fairly large flexible brush and I'm letting the brush do a lot of the work for leaving highlights in and if you're using this technique and you mess up you can always go back and add white highlights either with your white signo or with um, like white gouache or copic opaque white. It may take some practice to get um, to be able to fill in the highlights the way you want to um, using the brush you're using. So it's perfectly fine to practice. Um, something I enjoyed doing in 2015 was I would do something called style tests where I would try to break down how illustrators and artists I admired rendered their characters, what sort of style conventions they used, and would try to draw Kara in their style. So that way I'm not just copying something they already drew, but I am trying to understand what makes their style tick. And I feel like it really made me stronger as an artist and it also um, improved my ability to be able to replicate styles, which is great if you're a freelance artist or if you're a work for hire. So I'm gonna go back in and add some areas of white. let those dry and then knock those back with um, the black. 
So next thing I need to do is fill in areas that are entirely in shadow, like the underside of her dress. And then this dress is supposed to be um, a patchwork pattern dress. So I'm going to go ahead and also fill in using my large Kuretake number six. I'm going to fill that in as well. And that way it'll give it time to dry and I can add a pattern on top of that using the white signal if I want to. When you're working in black and white like this, you need to build in a lot of visual interest, but you also need to try not to allow things to get away from you and get um, muddy or heavy handed. And that takes a lot of practice and trial and error. So um, you might as well get that out of your system and make as many mistakes as possible so you can learn as quickly as possible. When I was at SCAD for my master's degree, I had an inking class and I did so many inking exercises that I never turned in because I was just trying to figure out my inking style. And I used all sorts of materials too, not just those recommended in class. So you notice I covered up most of the um, the like fold lines. I'm gonna put those back in using a white signal. You can also just uh, leave them uncolored in if you have a steady hand. Right now my Signo and Kara's hair is dried, so I'm sort of blending it into the rest of her hair a little bit better. Because um, Signos don't give a very nuanced line, so you're gonna need to use your brush pen to sort of add some of those streaks back in and make it look like it's part of the whole. When you make corrections, you don't want it to look like you made a correction. You want it to look like it was supposed to look like that. And that is often easier said than done. So this Kuratake uh, num uh, yeah, number six is gonna take a little while to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing in patterns. Um, and I'm just gonna freehand them. But if you were in a similar situation, I would suggest maybe looking some up as reference. I do this a lot, so I have some already in mind but um, it's better to work from reference if you don't have something. Black and white as, a, as an inking choice is more, um, it's increasingly becoming either an active choice made by the artist for visual effect or um, a choice by a traditional print publisher due to uh, cost so this isn't necessarily a skill you may find yourself relying on often, but you may decide to use black and white for effect in your own pages because it'll really stand out, especially if you're working in color in general. And when you're relying on just two colors, black and white, to make your illustration work. Um, you really do need to add visual detail to draw the eye in and to help tell a story because you're not going to have color to help with that. I mean, in this illustration, there is some non-photo blue, but that's more for the underdrawing and that would be dropped out entirely. So some little zigzag stitches right there. And when you're drawing in black and white or you're illustrating in black and white, there are many, many le levels of detail, many, many ways of handling things. Um, my black and white art in general tends to, um, I, I grew up reading a lot of uh, Mitsuru Adachi and Rumiko Takahashi. So I happen to like, oh, and Kiyohiko Azuma. I 
I tend to lean away from tone um, and I like a heavier line, um, a more bouncy sort of style, hand-drawn sort of details. That's my personal preference because the artists I admired when I was growing up used those techniques themselves. All right, so I'm gonna go back in and add in some of the white details that got covered up. And you wanna wait for the ink to be dry. And the number six puts out a lot of ink, so it takes a really long time to dry. If you're a little more impatient, you can switch over to um, using the like uh, white gouache or Copic Opaque White. Some people really like Sakura Jelly Roll gel pens. I kind of hate them, so I don't use them. I haven't ever had good results with them. And I sort of drew in the fold lines. Now I'm just sort of tightening them up so they look intentional, which they are. And then I need to draw some sort of a pattern. I'll go ahead and do stitching right here. And maybe little clovers on this one. And um, you may notice that some of my gel pen is drying lighter than others or less opaque. Um, you can go over it again when it's fully dry to build up levels of opacity, or you can switch to a heavier duty product, which might be what I end up doing. As with most types of illustration though, being patient is really a virtue for black and white inking. You're gonna need patience to draw in lots of little details. You're gonna need patience for your ink to dry. This is why many um, prefer to do their inking digitally because a lot of the restrictions are removed. Um, I mean, you still need to develop skill. You still need to develop patience, but you know, um, there are tones you could like apply digitally rather than drawing them in by hand which would make the process go a lot faster. I find it very satisfying to ink by hand, um, but I'm also the sort of artist who really likes having a physical finished piece when she's done. So that's why most of my work is traditional media. Now, if you're not good at freehanding, and believe me, there's no shame in that, you should sketch in what you want. Here I have my trusty non-photo blue pencil and I'm going to sketch in some stripes on her leggings rather than trying to get them perfect the first time. I'm also going to denote, and I do that with an X, which stripes are going to be filled in black. Now this is handy because if I was going to pass this off to someone else, they could go ahead and fill it in with no problem. And when you do things like draw in stripes or draw in patterns, you really want them to bend and move around the fabric and the forms you're drawing as best as you possibly can render it that way um, because that's going to make it more believable and convincing. Now, if you're filling in fairly large areas, you're gonna wanna switch to a larger br brush than you were using for your outline, just cause it's gonna save your hand a lot of, a lot of grief. You could even opt, instead of using a brush pen, to go ahead and do your fills with a brush dipped in ink. It's really up to you. Um, I find brush pens very convenient because they are a low mess. And since I have a cat who runs all over my studio making all sorts of mess, um, foolproof is definitely something I always appreciate. 
so now we have the basics of this illustration drawn in um, or inked in rather almost done you can draw in a shadow and that will help ground the thick the the image to the picture plane especially if all you're doing is like a character pinup and when I say pinup it doesn't mean um, pin up in like sort of like the playboy kind of way it just means it's like a, a fairly standard character illustration um, not really much background not much interaction so if you're doing that kind of a pin up grounding your character to the picture plane with a shadow can um, really help make your piece look a little bit more believable And I'm using the Kuretake number six right now because it has a nice big brush and I can very quickly fill in this shadow. All right, so this was a very basic tutorial on how to do inking for spot blacks or uh, black area fills. I hope you guys found it useful. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. If you enjoy content like this and you'd like more of it, please consider subscribing to my channel or checking out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. If you'd like to help make more content like this possible, you can do so by sharing this to your social networks and expanding my audience, which I would greatly appreciate. And if you'd like to help financially make more content like this possible, please consider funding my Patreon. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you around. Bye.